Hey, how you doing, you sexy beast? Adam here with part two of creating a membership system for your website using PHP and MySQL. And in part one, we created the database at our hosting control panel, and then we also created the table inside of that database that's going to be used to store all of the member data when they join or when they edit their data. The next step in the process is we have to be 100% sure that we are connecting to that database because we're going to have various scripts that are going to have to communicate to that database. If we knock this out at this point in the series, we won't ever have to worry about connection issues again because we won't have any connection issues if we test fully right now. We're going to use this MySQL connect quick test and this connect to MySQL file. And these, if in case anybody's wondering, all of this code and all of these files, all the various files I might show are going to be in a free downloadable zip package that you guys can get and I'm not going to take very long to bang out this series I think I'm going to do it all tonight and I know it's not proper etiquette to just throw up a bunch of videos on YouTube at one shot but that's what's going to happen I'm just going to as I make them I'm going to throw them up and if that upsets a lot of people sorry okay first let's take a look at this connect to MySQL file which is going to be the file that we reference any time in any script that we have on our site that needs to communicate to that database we're just going to simply use one little line in those various scripts to reference this connection file that way you don't have to have this sitting or any of this sitting in your various scripts we can just do an include which is a, a better more modular way to code I think okay so the first thing in this script is we set up some variables and these variables really this information could be put right into these spots but I set it up into variables just to make it a little more easier to for you to identify what needs to get put where okay so here we have localhost for most situations and for most people that's going to remain localhost but maybe you're a GoDaddy and you have a different string of characters that is the address for your MySQL host. You just want to make sure that you get the proper host name in there. If it's not localhost and you fail trying to use localhost, you fail in connection, then you know that you have a specific host address that you need to reference in that in that spot right there. But for most folks, it will remain localhost. And I'd also like to mention right now that I'm going to be working on a live server on the internet and not on a WAMP, LAMP, ZAMP or any crap like that because I like to test where I'm actually going to launch and run these systems from because a lot of people they might test on WAMP, LAMP and ZAMP and then when they go to put their files on a live server on their website there's complications there's things they have to go back and change which I like to avoid all that stuff by just throwing up and testing right on the actual server okay now these other three variables are pretty much self-explanatory you put the value of your database username here you put the value that is your database password here and you put the value that is your database name right there so once you have your database name the password your username and localhost all set up or whatever your hosting address is for your MySQL database then this file is complete all you have to do is put in the proper values for these three things and then make sure your host string is correct then we'll take a look at MySQL connect quick test now this is a very simple file that is just made for quick testing once you run the test once you can just pretty much delete the file off your server or you could leave it there or whatever but it's not going to be used within the website system it's just going to be used for testing early on to make sure we're connecting that way we can move on with the system so the first line in that script is include once or you can have this say require once which is a more strict way to bring that file in but I'm going to use include once and my uh, server my PHP any file is set up to show warnings so if the file is not found when I try to include it a warning is going to pop up on the page and say up oh, we couldn't you know the warning we couldn't find that include file you were trying to include so it has to be in the correct folder on your server with all your other scripts to reference it correctly okay so we include once connect to mysql.php which was this file here and what happens is if we get a successful connection using these four variables 
then this is going to output or it's going to print or echo to the page you are successfully connected to your database otherwise you would see an include warning or MySQL connection error happy coding if you see this data on the page then you're all set now I'm gonna take these two files I'm gonna FTP them up to my server and I'm going to test oh by the way if any of this data happens to be wrong say you have you put the wrong database username in or the wrong host name wrong password or wrong database name you're going to get say you have the wrong connection data for the host username or password this MySQL error function right here is going to display on the page to you and it's going to show you exactly what the error is and what's causing the problem now if you happen to put the wrong name for the database here then this die function will fire off and just tell you no database by that name exists okay so I've FTP those two files and now I'm going to navigate to them using my browser I happen to be an Internet Explorer right now which no it's not my favorite browser and yes I use all four of the most popular ones you can use any one you want and it'll still work the same so I'm gonna go to that file you see right there develop PHP tests in the PHP scripts here's the member system I'm setting up and there's the MySQL connect quick test at PHP I'm gonna navigate directly to that file and see what happens booyah baby you're successfully connected to your database otherwise you would see an include warning now when you look at this file you will say how is Adam connecting when he's just got this generic random crap in there I actually on the server I have my real string data in there now since we see this message we know that we can now include once this one line here all we have to do is put that on any one of the scripts that might have to connect to our database and communicate with it so all we have to do is sync in this one line and make sure this connect to mysql file is living in the directory there now we can move along okay the next part of the process is getting the home page ready to have different links on top depending on whether the user is logged in or not so if they're a logged in user and we're going to have special links up top to show their username when they click that username we want that to go to their profile and we also want to have a link to where they can go and edit their account features and then we also want to have a link to where they can log out so if they're logged in there's going to be three links up there their name will be a link they'll have a, a word like account or account settings whatever and then after that there'll be a logout link now if they happen to be not logged in uh, we'll have a link that says register and then next to that log in so it's really simple to set up the the logic that you need to make that happen using the session variables so before we can even make the join form or set up the the login form or anything like that you want to have the home page where people would come to initially you want to have that ready to sense whether the users logged in or not so that's what we're going to cover here so let's go into the code view first let's look in the design view here you'll see I have a div set up as the body and then the head is a table and I opted to use a table here so I can more easily just put a column over here to shove those links over to the the right side of the page and this is the kind of layout where it will be uh, auto expanding this will be an auto expanding layout so it's set to be 100 percent for the div and the header so if somebody's got a little tiny browser resolution they'll see it like that if somebody's got a nice big one they'll see it like that okay now let's look at the code that makes this logic happen that will output these links the way we need it to so here we have all of the regular HTML data like your page would normally be without all of the PHP and MySQL stuff going on and you can see what we're doing is we're echoing out a variable called top links if we go into the split view in Dreamweaver and by the way I'm working in Dreamweaver CS4 uh, if we go into the split view you'll see this yellow block here is that top links variable that we're outputting right there okay so let's go back into code view and there's your normal doc type starts right there that would normally be line one so in order to make this happen all you have to do is put some PHP on top of all of that 
and the first thing you want to do is start session so you run the session start function and that will allow you to access all of the session variables that might happen to be active for any given user so what we do is first thing is we set the top links variable we just kind of initialize it and I'm setting it as empty to initialize it there and then we run an if and else condition which is evaluation type logic so you can do things according to whether certain conditions are met or not and in this condition you can see I'm saying if is set this is the PHP is set function and if you want to check out any of these functions I might be using in depth you can go to php.net and research any of these functions so we say if is set the session ID for this user and this gets set when they use the login form on our site which we haven't covered yet but we'll be getting to that so when the user logs in the session ID gets set so if the user is not logged in this else condition comes into play so let's discuss that one first so if the session ID is not set and they're not a logged in user we're going to give them the top links of register and then a bullet symbol and then the login page so they can either register to the site if they happen to not have registered yet and they want to or they can log in if they happen to have registered already and they just want to simply log in so those are the links you give them if they are not logged in if they are logged in that means the session ID variable would be set so we give them a different set of links all we have to do is gather the session ID variable and the session username variable into local PHP variables just for easier use in this output here so the top links variable becomes three different links the first one goes to the member profile so they can view their own profile if they click their username see we output the username as that link display and the the the, uh, the URL variable is going to be ID of that user ID so that way when they click their name they go to their profile and then the next link that's sitting right next to that is going to be their account and this we have to change to let's just change that to account that way when they click that they'll go to their account and we don't have to put a URL variable in here for this functionality we don't have to have a URL variable you know how we set URL var variables by uh, putting the question mark and then we put the variables identifier and then the value here so it's kinda like key value pairs but there's only one in this case here and this one for their going to their account to edit their account data you don't have to have any and I'll show you why once we check out that member account page and finally the last link we want to have is the logout link which will take them to the logout page and that doesn't have to have anything special in it either they can just go to the logout page and we'll destroy their session they'll be logged out so basically that's how it works and you have to have session start function first thing in the script and that will allow you to access their session variables so that's how the home page is going to be able to sense whether a user is logged in or not okay so we'll continue on in part three we'll probably discuss the join form and the login form so sit tight these will be coming up pretty quick I'm just gonna go ahead and bang it all out it's basically all the scripts are done I just have to tweak them a little bit but I really want to discuss it in depth for people who are just starting out with uh, PHP and MySQL and trying to understand how to set up simple membership systems in their websites to give people certain content if they happen to be a member or show them certain things and other people would see different things and all kind of happy stuff like that.